two and a half thousand years ago, Greek philosopher Thales said the most difficult thing in life is to know yourself. 1992, and Pa explains that it's also difficult for managers to know their organisation. Today in an organisation's external environment is increasingly networked and knowledge based. The new economy will be global and interdependent. Organisations need to operate as an open system. Internally, people working and re- with and reporting to managers of the critical human capital on which the organisation is built. Management approaches, or management paradigms, are tools that can be used to align an organisation's critical human capital with its external environment. The management approaches we look at are classical approaches developed in the 1900s, that transformed manufacturing efficiency. There was limited competition, limited choice for customers, so it allowed organisations to operate as closed systems focused on operational efficiency. The behavioural approaches were developed in the 40s and the 60s to respond to changes in the external environment. As levels of education improved and communications like radio and television changed expectations, Management approaches needed to change to focus on people, relations and growth. The contingency approaches, developed in the late 1900s, mixed classical and behavioural approaches. The organisation's need to operate as true open systems, with flexibility to respond to rapid changes in the external environment. Reviewing some of the changes in the external environment, we see that Between 1900 and today, education levels in Australia have increased dramatically. From only 1% of students going to high school in 1900 to now over 80% going to high school today. Dramatic changes in communication and sharing of information have changed expectations. In 1900, there was no phone link between Sydney and Melbourne. The first radio station only started broadcasting in 1923. Black and white television followed in 1956. In fact, in 1969, I watched Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin walk on the moon. TV had changed the way we thought about the world. It changed what we thought was possible. In the 70s, we have colour TV, closely followed by personal computers in offices and homes. Then in 1993... The internet launched. Now we have smartphones with Facebook and Skype in your pocket and ready to give you instant access to people and information all over the world. Globalisation and the growth in world trade has also changed our expectations. Moving from manual loading of wool bales in 1908 to the start of container shipping in the 1950s, which changed the cost and efficiency of trade. Then between 1950 and 2010, there was a massive increase in world trade, allowing changes like moving manufacturing to lower cost offshore markets. Massive changes in the external environment mean organisations also have to change. Organisations need to operate as flexible open systems. However, as Pa suggests, It is often difficult for managers to clearly see the organisational paradigm they operate in and it's difficult to change organisations. If we look at the CEOs of four well-known global companies, it will help us understand how organisational change could be limited by paradigms being invisible to managers. Coca-Cola was established in 1886, about the time that classical approaches were standard management practice. The current CEO of Coca-Cola has been working for the company for 36 years, so most of his working life has been within the Coca-Cola culture. Ford was established in 1903 and was closely associated with scientific, classical scientific paradigm, which revolutionised production of cars. CEO Fields has been working for Ford for 25 years. IBM was established in 1911 as international business machines. 
The CEO, Romerty, has been working for IBM for 33 years. McDonald's was established in 1940. From the start, McDonald brothers set up their kitchens like assembly lines to assume ma- ensure maximum efficiency. A scientific management approach. The current CEO, Thompson, has worked for McDonald's for 24 years. These CEOs have been working in one company culture longer than most university students have been alive. What do you think? Are they able to see their organisation clearly? What can we learn from the development of management approaches over the last hundred years? Scientific management proved its value with the launch of the Model T Ford. There was little competition and customers just wanted to buy a car they could afford. In the early 1900s, centralised decision making was effective because there were relatively few decisions to be made. What colour do we paint our cars? Black. OK, the decision was made for the next 10 years. By 1927, the price of a T-model had dropped from $850 to $250 and $1.5 million had been produced. While scientific management revolutionised production line efficiency, administrative and bureaucratic approaches laid the foundation for efficiency in large organisations, documenting the roles managers needed to perform, planning, organising, leading, controlling, Recognising the interrelated actions required in large organisations. Today we call we talk about systems and processes. Recognising the value of formal written guidelines to direct behaviour and decisions. Workplace health and safety guidelines are a modern example, important and relatively unchanging. Behavioural approaches developed as employees' expectations and the opportunities changed with better education and greater awareness of the world. Management had moved from controlling people like machines to influencing unpredictable behaviour of people who believe they had a choice. Management had become the fluffy, woolly, emotion-driven, unpredictable world it is today. Contingency approaches recognise the value of the classical approaches on efficiency and coordination as well as behavioural focus on teamwork, respect and trust. Producing 10,000 complex high-tech machines like a Boeing 737, each with 600,000 parts, requires both efficiency and effectiveness. So what does this mean for you? International students returning home after living and studying in a completely different culture will see their home culture more clearly. They will notice things that were invisible before. As Pa says, the paradigm we're living in is often invisible. Living in another culture allows you to step outside and look back at the paradigm you lived in. Management approaches are a tool managers can use to step outside their organisation's paradigm. They allow them to see the organisation in relation to the external environment. The management approaches then provide a reliable guide to help align the organisation's human capital with demands of a changing external environment. The CEOs in companies like Coca-Cola and IBM have lived through massive change in the past 20 or 30 years. How will management approaches change during your career? In the next 40 years, managers will be responding to issues like the shortage of resources, peak oil production for example, Increases in demand for transparency. McDonald's attempts to address demand for information about what was in their meals has been used by consumers to attack the company about unhealthy food. Technology forecasters like Gartner Inc. tell us that in the future, employees will be smart machines. It looks like we may be back to treating employees like machines and scientific approaches may be useful. Training and even university education is changing with projections that 80% of organisational learning programs will be informal. Organisations will need new management approaches and understanding the management paradigms will help you as a professional manager to see your organisation's paradigm clearly and puzzle out ways to change.